Welcome back to some professional StarCraft to a Highlight Terran versus Protoss battle. I am proud to present in the blue SCVs, the Frenchman. It is Clem. Facing off against someone of comparable aggression. A Protoss player has been making a name for himself lately. It's the Loose Cannon. It's Yao. Yes, I think uh, evenly matched in their intensely aggressive, nearly reckless styles, even in this matchup. Both of them well known for those early timings and early control, but I don't really think of either of them as a later game player. So we'll have to see. We've got a couple matches from Home Story Cup, which probably on the last tournaments this isn't on the new patch, so make uh, your predictions on how that'll go, but uh, still a lot of the early game in uh, either the old or the new, relatively unchanged. So, starting out with a Twilight Council against a 1-1-1 at Destiny Clownfish build, if you would, from Clem. One barracks, one factory, a starport, command center on the way, but hidden it's, from that first adept. Now, hidden very much like the the dislikes on YouTube, uh, unfortunately. But on the bright side, you still have the ability to see the likes. Blinking, you might miss it, though. It's down, starting out with the most typical of, of non-Stargate openers. Rarely do you see anything but blink if the Stargate isn't the... Uh, what we opt for to start inside and out with relatively defensible blink cliffs here aka reaper cliffs they are kind of one and the same uh, i don't think it's particularly great on this map but definitely not bad either right in the middle of the road there so uh, a solid choice for someone who wants to take map control and maybe have a more direct response to something like a will mine drop a couple of depths at the front, Clem did go for the early gas. He's got a couple Widowmonds already out. No armory, no drilling clothes, none of those fancy fixings. But instead, just a couple mines and a medevac. First couple of depths heading out. They're just looking around. The Shades still have enough vision to see if the uh, Reaper Hellion's sticking around, or maybe even more Hellions behind it, but... No, indeed it is going to be the Widow Mine drop. Stalkers. Oh, Clem, beautifully done. Clem doing whatever he can to keep Jean busy. And, well, it did distract the attentions of the Stalker, but Jean yeah, watching for it. Sacrifices one probe on the altar of defusing the mine. And now, as Blink finishes, uh, the Stalkers will make their way out of the base. Robotics Bay already. Warp Prism joining. Three gates already done. Zhao not going for a particularly greedy. We've seen this a little lately with uh, Hero as well. Is instead of taking that super quick third, like you might see in Protoss versus Zerg, going for uh, just two base tech in order to make sure you have enough to, to deal with the Terran Bio Ball. And Clem not going for a particularly quick stim here. Just now starting at the five minute mark after this early... Uh, not real, I'm not going to say aggression, but just, just kind of keeping tabs on things at the Widowmonts. The four Stalker hit squad. Enough to kill SCVs in a single volley. Uh, threaten the Raven. And be intimidated by a handful of Marines. So, flies away. D kind of the same thing here. Maybe a little less damage potential, but the War Prism. Four Stalkers just going to keep Clem honest for now. And he's going to be bottled up in his base, at least until Stim Combat Shield plus one, the triple threat. Make their way towards finishing double barracks with tech labs here. So Marauders, likely going to see some heavy, heavy use since Bion and, and Clem are kind of two sides of the same coin much of the time. I wouldn't be surprised to see a mass Marauder style composition. Sometimes Bion ends up with more Marauders than Marines. Uh, though the Colossi usually help with that, but not the way Terrans like. Speaking of, extended Thermal Lance on the way. 
which uh, alongside all these gateways makes my thermal lance extend for good macro. So overall, down at 47 probes, somehow missed all oh, the target. Never mind. <sighs> he was uh, microing his blink stalkers on the other side. And that means, well, down go four probes. Uh, not the ideal here. Not really a situation where Zhao can afford to lose any workers, as he didn't go for that third nexus very early. Wow, pretty greedy on, on re-sieging up that, that observer. But here comes Clem. He's got energy on the Raven, though. Half HP, combat shield done, stim done, plus one nearly done. And medevacs are completed. So, with that moving out onto the map, Marauder's leading the charge. Most likely to be able to break the knees. Well, not done yet, though. Concussive shells on the way of those stalkers. Widowmine dropped. The Widowmine is still intact. And once again, Clem drawing attention away with the army. Widowmine retargeted. Finds a connection. Two kills. Stalkers out of position. And now Zhao, he's scrambling. He's got extended thermal lamps, but there's two interference matrices on that raven. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we have, I believe, a zealot warp and already killing SCVs. But this is where the action is for now. Concussive shells completed. Seven SCVs down. We, we catch the tail end of the charge lots being cleaned up. But here comes the Raven. Two scrambles. Knocks the Colossus out of the fight for the next 10 seconds or so. Even wandering forward. Guardian shield. Targeted Colossus! Oh, that is one of the things that's getting fixed in the patch. Is, uh, Colossi and other units will no longer wander forward. They'll pretend they have a t an attack. Uh, even when they don't. When they're interference matrix. So... Uh, I am looking forward to that change, but Zhao, unfortunately, didn't come soon enough for him as he loses a Colossus, but overall, warps and enough units, and with the counter attack at the back, was able to keep Clem intact, or keep Clem back, pinned back. I like that. I'm moving on. <laughs> Templar Archives on the way. Disruptors. Another mine drop loading up. At some point, well, well, Clem shies away from the more siege tank. Oh, they spot each other. I mean, that prism's still out there. Some Vikings on the way. Dual purpose. Knock down the prism. Deal with the Colossi. Vikings, a more direct counter to Colossi. Not so great against disruptors and storm. Plus one. Armor is halfway done for Clem. Zhao is... Uh, Working on plus one ground weapons, about to complete it. Fourth Nexus in that top left corner. Spotter Pylon sees the Widowmine drop. Of course, doesn't know it's Widowmine drop. Can have strong suspicions, though. Third base, no gas at it. Looking vulnerable. Something recalled there. War Prism. Oh, the War Prism gets out. Quick recall. Only loses a little HP. That, that Widowmine drop. This is what the best Terrans do. They always have a kicker. Something something ready to dive in. Of course, Zhao's done a pretty good job of the same thing uh, with the prisms here. Three probes down, but this time it's for the army. Actually, well, not even just this time, but throughout the game, Clem has been using this Widowmine drop, or these Widowmine drops, in order to draw the attention and the army out of position. And so far, that's uh, resulted in a 20-ish supply lead, an upgrade lead, Though the economies are somewhat even. The charge lots dealt with. Shield battery overcharge, very optimistic in this scenario. Scan sees the Archons, charge lots, stalkers, and the rest of the Robo Bay units. And that's enough for Clem to back off. He does not have the army together here. Though the Colossi are going to be stepping down the wrong side of things. Still, just not the position for Clem to be able to turn. Boost the medevacs out of danger as well. Blink stalkers on the chase. Shaping up to be quite a dramatic game, but still one of those that could end almost instantaneously if one player makes a big mistake. Anti-armor missile. Ghosts have hit the field. EMPs could get involved. Oh, so interference matrix down to one Colossus. The other one under fire. Disruptor shot. Finds a few units, but the disruptor is caught in front. Concussive shells. Knock it down. And the Vikings finish off one out of two Colossi. Still some anti-armor missile stalkers underneath. 
Gonna be cleaned up at the EMP means the rest of the units are gonna evaporate almost instantaneously. Guard locks from the back line, even a snipe coming through. And guess what? Clem comes out of this fight with a 40 supply lead. Disruptor shot though, through the bushes, takes the front end of that bio army, but it costs him the disruptor in turn. Jean on the ropes now as Clem. He's, he lost most of his, his core bio units, but those are by far the easiest to replace. He's got 2-2 two, two on the way, but Zhaon has plus two ground weapons coming up as well. Vikings chasing down the warp prism here. Three more barracks on the way. I believe that brings us to the Octorex, indeed, as Clem going to be focusing on that ground army more than anything else. Still adding in the Vikings. We got a second forge for Jean. Clem was not able to translate that victory on the ground. Oh, loses the, the war prism. Cle but Clem was not able to translate that that victory on the ground into uh, a successful attack that like kills a base or even potentially wins the game with this sort of supply lead. But he's now consolidated his forces. He's reinforced the numbers of Marines and Marauders. He's added in a few more Vikings. And John, how many gateways? Ten gates. And the charge lots once again undercut a hamstring Clem's attack. In fact, trying to draw the Widowmines into the SCVs. Give them a taste of their own medicine. And that means John will, will allow, will live another day. Another few minutes at least, as he's the one who takes back map control. Clem wanders a little out of position, his rally point greedy in the middle of the field, and now caught between a rock and a disruptor place. Oh, EMPs, but there are just too many eruptors as Zhaon shoves his way in here, covering fire. Eats a few shots on the Marines, but Clem just simply cannot deal with this head on. Did he use all his disruptor shots? Oh my god, you gotta, you gotta always keep one in the chamber. They can tell. And then the Widow Mines connect on the way out. And what was a pretty nice Jean... Oh my. Okay, it's a roller coaster out here. So what started as a pretty nice attack from Jean devolved quickly as he ran out of disruptor shots. And a Widow Mine is well connecting. But at the same time, the fadeaway shot eats up a bunch of the bio, snipes, taking out the ghost, disruptors for the flank. Blink stalkers come in, chased down the ghost, murdered on the field. A handful of medevacs get out, Vikings on deck, disruptors wander forward. How many eruptors have died? Nine disruptors this game. Uh, the Widow Mine still a perpetual explosive thorn in the side of town. His worker count suffering. He's only at 67 probes, which is still a significantly less income than that of Clem, who not only has 73 SCVs, but he has mules, much to the dismay of every non-Terran. Disruptor wanders around, doesn't find it. Still on the chase here. Oh, this... Zhao just seems to have disruptors. No matter, like, just wherever he is, there's a disruptor. It just comes like, <laughs> get one army, one disruptor free. How many? He does have two robotics facilities. Are there more widow mines? Oh my. This widow mine, only one kill, but there's no detection here. Charge lots wandering by. It is clear Zhao is struggling to keep up with all this. Widow mine finds another connection. And so far, Clem still a huge supply lead. He's going to try to lay down the killing blow here. He doesn't have anything that really deals directly with the mass disruptor besides, you know, shooting him in the face. Speaking of shooting in the face, though, oh no, Clem! He dove on the eruptors and they exploded like a grenade underneath him. Clem! No liberators, no tanks. He's playing that fast and loose beyond style. But it appears it was a little too loose this time. It all unravels. Oh, no. Well, that put Jean right back in it, especially considering the worker counts. The army supplies are nearly even. Those double barrel ruptors are able to take out a huge chunk of the army as Clem wanders into them. There's still Widowmine scattered throughout this choke point. Pretty disgusting for Colossi. But EMPs soften things up. Them able to turn the tables here. The disruptor 
Another one wandering in from the north. Wandering Rupters is the name of the game right now for Xiao. Widow Mines taking chunks out on the reinforcements. We can see it on the minimap. Another disruptor shot killed those, well, some of the Widow Mines at the front. Blink Stalkers to the south. Charge lots charging as they do. More EMPs. Enhanced Shockwaves is done. Still, Zhao blinking for his life. He's down 20 workers. He's down 20 army supply. But one disruptor hit can change all that. Still no liberators out of Clem. The more, uh, the more accepted counter to mass disruptor. Widow mines from the north again. 2-2 two, two is now done, giving Clem a slight upgrade advantage. He's about to finish plus three weapons, which means he has a, a two upgrade advantage, in, especially in that weapon upgrade. But he keeps leaving his army in somewhat precarious positions as more danger balls wander up the field. Widowmine shot hits both sides. More hits coming through. Disruptor through the, <laughs> through the rocks here. Clem still has 40 more army supply, but he's just... Oh, another Widowmine hit. They're just scattered throughout the field. Zhao just doesn't have the detection or hasn't been able to maintain it, especially since he's using all that robo time on these Rupters. Uh, another shot, looking for whatever he can, but oh, Planetary even getting in on the action as Clem flanks, knocks down the shields, and takes out the Rupters. The army, Little Mines connect again. How many? Four kills, four kills. Finally, the disruptors will clean him up. Down is at 126 supply, but he's managed to make... Uh, when he's backed up against the wall, that's that's clearly when he's most dangerous. He's been trying to make an attack happen, but every time that Clem gets pushed back, he ends up just taking these incredibly efficient fights. Jean has lost about the same amount of gas, 4,000 more minerals. He's been struggling to mine even remotely close to as much. Uh, we got, right now, a fusion core on the... But it's definitely for advanced ballistics here. Especially as he's getting plus two ship weapons. Clem, looking to close this out. Uh, and the answer would be liberated. Another couple of EMPs across the board. Snipes as well. Disruptor shots. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Hard to tell exactly what it hit, but that's because it hit so much. Solid chunks. Another set of disruptors on both sides. Ship weapons finishing. Those two disruptors expended, though. Shield battery overcharge required. Recall... He, he recalls kind of an awkward amount of units, enough to deal with this. Advanced ballistics on the way. War prism scouting? Like, that's actually, that's a real prison. It's not hallucinating. He's just kind of hanging out over there. Plus three infantry armor for Clem. Bio army. Again, disruptor shots. Warding away. Threatening. And uh, the blink stalkers using him as cover. Liberators on the field. Mm, looking for more. Widow mine. Disruptor deals with it, but the Liberators have finally joined. And now Zhao is going to have to think about how he deals with that. His advanced ballistics about to complete. Plus two ship weapons is done, which means these Liberators will two shot stalkers. One shot if an EMP lands. And I give uh, pretty good odds on that happening. Well, here comes Clem. He still hasn't been able to lay down the killing blow. Xiao just not dying. That's so far what he's been doing for the vast majority of this game. Vikings out in front. Disruptor inside the overlapping liber liberation zones here. The Venn diagram of freedom. But here comes Xiao bringing everything to bear. His zealots and marauders alike. More disruptor shots. Point blank target fire from Clem is good. But the charge lock count is better. The Blink Stalker's over the top, and Liberators may cause some sort of pause in this attack, but only a slight delay so far. Widowmind shot. Ends up connecting on the Blink forward. Another Disruptor shot. Zoning out. He's got one last shot. 
More disruptors wandering in. Charge lots. 15 SCVs and Clem's advantage is, is quickly evaporating here. Alongside the purification novas. He's, he's doing a much better job of staggering his shots. Giving himself some room... Oh, well. That force field, I don't think, helping there. But he's staggering the shots just enough to keep Clem back. Clem scans over to that right side. You see on the minimap, he's looking for extra bases. Do I have to worry about this? Do I have to get damage done on the other side, or can I focus on the fight? And with no nexus on that right flank, Clem doesn't have to stress out too much. He's still building the right army composition. He's still getting the Liberators. He's even getting plus three ship weapons. John, on the other hand, continues. I don't know the last time he built a probe. Uh, he's lost 20, but... Uh, a Liberator. Oh, oh no. Advanced Ballistics complete, which means the Liberator essentially denies that mineral patch. I believe it can be hit by Stalkers there, but there are definitely places. Well, it can be, but the Liberator hits back harder. Disruptors trying to intercept. Oh, the split ends up with a ghost. Two more Ruptors. Down kind of uh, flailing here with the Disruptor shots. The command center. Does he have any more shots? He has one in the tank. Yeah, that was an optimistic one. But he's he's definitely getting better about staggering them. Mm, looks like that shot landed there as we cut away. Don't look, Terrence, but Clem goes to the top left. The supply is still favoring him. What is the... I, there's only been a few moments where the army supplies have been close to even. Clem continues to maintain that lead. But the economies get thinner and thinner, and that means we, we it comes down to less and less units as time goes on, as the incomes uh, are so reduced. The thing is for Clem, those units, the unit he has pretty much the most of is 12 Liberators. EMPing and scanning, deals with the DTs, observers, nine probes down to advanced ballistics Liberator, and there's many Many more of that came from John is just now building a Stargate. I, in an ideal world, he would have gotten that Stargate much quicker. But John has been working off of whatever probes he can scrap together for 15 minutes now. Oh, liberation is at hand. Clem. He's had enough. He's decided to lock down this entire zip code. Oh my. He can cover pretty much every angle. EMP plus plus two going on three liberators. Disruptor shots. Pretty much over two there. Clips a marauder. Clips a few more. But disruptors don't hit up to their eternal dismay. GG. Clem takes the match. And with relative, I, I think at no point was Clem losing. There were a few points where Jean scrapped his way back. He scrambled and scratched his way back into it. But it was mostly uh, Clem with map control and a few uh, punctuated disruptor shots interrupting it. So overall, game one. Uh, the first match, we're looking at a pretty dominant performance by the Frenchman, but... We got one more game for you guys. We're on Tropical Sacrifice. So, some meta commentary. You guys made it to game two, which, uh, thank you for watching. Multiple games. Um, this was from Home Story Cup. I'm trying to, especially before the new patch goes live, which will be whenever the intern gets a lunch break and, uh, the, the Zerg Cabal slips him a crisp $20 bill under the table, and he's like, wow, this is three hours of pay. Um, so before that happens, I'm trying to cover all the highlight games I missed. Maybe not the full series, but I want to at least make sure uh, I, I touch on, especially from Home Story Cup, um, Team League will be doing soon. If you have any matches, I do read the comments, the majority, and don't worry. Your comment was great. I just totally missed it. If your comment was dumb, I totally missed it too. Don't worry. Um, I'm sure it was amazing though, so I didn't miss it. But thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Uh, hope you're enjoying the channel.
Make sure to check out the second channel if you want more of my games. Um, and and Stormgate on the horizon. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I'll be doing, but I'll hopefully be making your day a little bit better. So thank you guys for watching. Let's get into game two. Where Clem? I he he has his he feels set on going for the marine marauder mine and, and ghost. Definitely could have seen some liberators quicker in the last game, but but honestly, Clem kind of reminds me of Beyond. But like the Beyond that didn't win everything. Um, so the Beyond today is he he just does it all right. He's he's currently ranked third, and he's threatening to overtake Cyril. But the World Championships are coming up, so we'll see. Uh, that'll be the real test. But Clem, for a time, did overtake Beyond because both of them, these headstrong Terrans who have, have the style they want to play and kind of refuse to adjust it. We saw there at the end, it wasn't until the Liberators came out for Clem that, that really made the difference. That is the direct counter to Disruptors. They simply cannot have an answer to it. Until you get something like the Liberators, maybe Siege Tanks. The Disruptors are always a threat. This patch or the next. Uh, and and we saw that as Clem dove into the fourth base. Tried to kill the Ruptors and lost 30 supply. Because he took a couple shotgun blasts to the face. Um, that'll always be a threat. And you don't want to be left with nothing at home. So... Uh, well, we're, we're starting off a little differently, though, in game two. The Phoenix strongly suggesting that Reaper move along. Probably waiting for the second Phoenix to come out, so that way it can... That Reaper flying a little higher than it's used to. It was a dramatic few moments, though. Uh, uh... Hello? So that's a little awkward. A almost no HP Hellion... Comes home. No, you gotta target that Hellion down. Oh, no. Oh, it's a disaster. He had such an opportunity. If that Hellion, that no HP Hellion dies. Like, if he had gone over a speed bump, he would have died. If that no HP Hellion dies, then the Adepts are able to target down four or five Marines, and these Phoenixes are able to just get more and more damage. But the Hellion added a ton into that fight. Only a handful of marines go down, and the phoenixes are kind of left out to dry. Hmm, the cyclone. Oh, I like this. Uh, this is going to be some real fancy. Oh, wait. I think that was a tank in the back there, actually. Oh, God. Well, here we go. This is going to be one of those fights that it's impossible. Not impossible, but it's incredibly difficult to tell what's going on until after the fight's already ending. We have a whole lot of very technical units on both sides. We're going to have a Sentry Stalker Phoenix right up against... Uh, Medevac Viking Cyclone Tank. So, between the Phoenix pickups, the Cyclone Lock, the Tank, and the Viking, Zhaun has... This is a prickly thing to, to deal with for Zhaun. He needs either Overwhelming Force or Force Multipliers. And it looks like he's kind of going both directions. Okay, he's still building Phoenixes here. But he's also going with the charge. A bit supply blocked. Probably a little avoidable as the, the pylon that was killed was on Clem's side of the map. Probably could have seen that one coming. But, uh, but he was able to get a third base quite quickly this time around. So, uh, we will see. I say sagely. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Oh, oh, oh. Just a quick backhand there to break the lock. That was the cutest thing. And it works, right? Like, 
if if you pick it up even for that quick second there, it does interrupt the lock-on. Also, picking it up and killing it does interrupt the lock-on. Stim pack completed. Colossus? No, Colossus 1 is on the way. Two immortals with this. Bunch of charge lots being added in. No charge lock counterattack. Tanks on the low ground, shell it up high. Oh, wow, triggers the barriers. The force field is a little questionable. Honestly, the in the last few months, most of the force fields I've seen against Terran, I've wondered who, who the sentry's working for. Because there are very few scenarios where force fields are better for the charge lots than they are for the bio army against the charge lots. A little bit of a pat on the back here. The Nexus being reshielded by the overcharged battery. Which will buy a few more seconds. Charge lots from the north side. Drawing fire. Widowmine kills the tag. But this this army, until the Colossus comes out, unloading the DPS. But the Colossus starting to work through the Marines, which were the majority of it. The Marauders still chunking through the Immortals and the Colossus. Concussive shells is done. But for now, down holds. Clem picks up. And he heads for the main. No blink. Only two stalkers, but the fact that this is spotted means Shaun has time for preparation. The Widow Mine, recharge, but is dealt with. Well, I guess there's a there's an observer. Oh, the observer's out here. Beautiful placement there. I don't know if Clem sees it. But that observer was key in deciding the timing to pick that fight. The Colossus came out just in time. He picked his battle well, and while it didn't go amazing, it went well enough. And, and that means Jown is going to be able to hold on to his third. And actually start on a counterattack. This will let him know. All the units are the vast majority. If the Marauders and the Medivacs are here, that's the brunt of an attacking force. Now the charge lasts. Well, this is happening. All right. Extended Thermal Lance about to complete. Second row, but more gates. Ground weapons level one. Couple Vikings at a time as well. Looking for something of a repeat here. Just much more tank heavy from Clem. Really working the angles you'll find on this map. Acutely aware of them. We got shield battery and, and a cannon or two coming up. Mostly Marauders here. As Clem. It's just the Marauder line. Able to tank the lances there with um, their armored status, their extra HP, and their stunning good looks. But at some point, the damage adds up. The immortal busting forward. Target fire, good. Finally, the immortal goes down, but all three tanks with it. Viking targeted, but the marauders are stimming into chase. Oh, disruptor on the field. Here we are again. Here we go. Uh, Clem up 30 supply. Down, yeah, struggling to put enough out there. Observer spots the army. Might be able to line up a disruptor shot. Clem picks up directly underneath the observer. Oh my, there's no way he... Oh, uh, is he faking it? Interesting. So, I, I'm not sure if he noticed the Observer before or after, but... Oh my god, the pump fake from Clem. He, he picks up, boosts away, kills the Observer, but Jown moves all of his Stalkers out of position. It worked. It was a pretty obvious play, but... You can't risk not calling the bluff. Well, the army gets into a good position, whittles away the front few reinforcements are drawing the stalkers off to the side here, but the shield battery overcharge should be able to help. So far, Clem not able to make any headway, and he lost most of the energy on the medivacs. Again? Zhaun. The, the mind games are really running deep here. As Zhaun puts another observer in almost the same spot. Oh, 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 what a save. What a save! Yeah, well, loses one medevac. Jean blinks in his map vision. He knows the map is done. And full of Terrence. 
but his map vision is about as good as he can get while still uh, producing out of these robos actual units that can attack, which unfortunately Observer is not well known for that. More just the emotional damage of being watched. Oh, uh, but the flank raptors! And he recalls them out before they can be killed. Jean improving here. And draws the supply gap closer, still in favor of Clem. He didn't kill those tanks outright, uh, but he did cut off a lot of reinforcements. Clem is pinned back to his bases here. And so far, Jown, uh not making a lot of the mistakes we saw in the first game. He's shored up his vision. He's managing his disruptors. He's held on to his bases. Though still not a huge fan of a high probe count, I will say. He, he, he is very much a uh, timing attack, kind of just keep warping in until it works situation. He doesn't have any gases at the third, um, but he did take a couple at the fourth, so he might be looking for heavier tech. I guess a dark shrine counts as heavier tech, right? So the double D's of destruction. Disruptors and Dark Templar, two things that can do so much damage that Metavex can't really heal through it. Uh, that's most of the intent. The Dark Templar with Blink, more for killing, like, planetaries. Uh, and Disruptors for killing almost everything else on the ground. Disruptors at the rocks. So, small bio army is able to collapse in. Clem falls back, Marauder's hit. Reinforcements on the side. Vikings, random force field, throws it out there. Stalkers blunk forward to try to get the Vikings, but maybe a few steps too far and they get snapped up by the Marauders. Disruptors, barracks, enhanced shock waves. Plus three, plus one for Jean. Plus three, plus two for Clem on the upgrades. We've got DT Blink as well, joining the production tab. Bunch of ghosts added in here. Seven in total. Charge lock counter. Finds a few SCVs. Another fadeaway disrupt. Oh, the disruptor died. Oh, that's a lot of Vikings. If he loses, how many Ruptors are left? Three. If he loses the Ruptors, then uh, I don't think the Colossi are going to be able to stop this bio ball from rolling over. More disruptors wandering. Few charge lots are those DTs at the back. DTs looking for an opportunity. No turret in the fourth base. Clem maintaining it. There's you know, a scan used. Probably the best he could hope for. Lazy to not be targeting SCVs there. Vikings, EMP. Do we have an overcharge? Overcharge is on cooldown, about 30 seconds. Enhanced shockwaves now done. So those ghosts able to land even larger EMPs across the board. John has finished up that plus three attack upgrade, but Clem is about to eclipse him with plus three, plus two. Colossi, well, everyone heading towards the six o'clock base. Stalkers blinking forward. Knocking down the Liberators. Charge lots, forcing micro. Shadow strike complete. Upgrade's not quite there yet. Ghost in an awkward position for Clem. Maybe not what you want to lead the charge with. Falls back a bit. EMPs on the charge lots. Who's flanking who? It looks like Clem from the north side, but a lot of bruised bio units going to be sliced and diced. Another disruptor hit. Takes out the tanks. EMPs return fire. More EMPs. Archons down. Jean regroups back at his base. Gets a little reshielding. At the same time, Clem waiting for the energy and some heals from his, his medevax. Ship weapons level one on the way. Liberators being added in. Realizing what kind of game we're going to is Clem. Both sides really just accelerating the progression that we saw in the previous match. Oh, wow. The danger town. Did he see them? I don't know if Clem saw him or he was just regrouping, but... Oh, my. Disruptor volley. 
observer in a perfect position to spot this. Another double fire. Oh, and the DTs blunked on the bio army to the north. Zhao able to ward away the... He kind of pulling a clem on this. Distracting with the main army to get some damage done with the backstab. And vice versa. The DTs and this Ruptor spotted in the same scan for once, though they won't be for long. Trying to come up the ramp here. One tank. Not particularly scary, but now rotating around to maybe take out that northern planetary. With all these Ruptors, he's got eight on the field. More Disruptor shots through. Planetary being repaired. Triple shot. The fade away, Clem just can't do anything right now. He doesn't have the Liberators with the army. Fusion core on the way. Liberators are chasing. They will eventually kill the prism. It can't fight back. I don't know if there's a recall. I don't think it's worth a recall at this stage. Clem chasing. Zhao moving up again. EMPs hit. Oh, maybe easier to count what they do. Disruptors ready. Fires a shot. The leading volley. Another double barrel. Follows it up. One, two, three. Another one. Another one. And keeps it going. Leans into it. Loses a Ruptor, though. Another shot. Only clips a Marauder. The fade away. Not good enough. He's chasing down the rest of the Ruptors. I don't know how many shots are left, but the shield stripped away from the entire Protoss army. And Clem, 20 supply lead. The DT zoned out. Clem at 190 to 170 here. Can you blink over that? Zhang looking for a flank with his DTs onto the army. He used... There's the scan. Liberators. EMP hits all the DT. A few disruptors. Sauntering up. Gliding into the fight. Okay, that one, that one was a little off. Plus one shields here as well. Joining... The repertoire. Still, no closer to a conclusion. Zhao decides he's gonna go for the natural. A bold move. We'll see if it works out. As neither player really reduced an economy, Zhao has a slight income lead. I think he has a couple more mining bases, especially since with mules, a lot of the bases of Clem are just mining out. Plus two ship weapons about to complete, but we got a fleet beacon and a second stargate on the way. Zhao thinking about Tempest here. The command center targeted. Liberators not sieged. Advanced ballistics not quite done. DT is still uh, looking for an opportunity. Liberators will siege up. Planetary a bit distracted here. An awkward position, but it might be enough to kill the planetary. It is. They slice through. Meanwhile, drop to the north. Or, I don't even know if it was a drop, but either way, I don't know if that's enough gateway units to fight here. With no splash damage, that Terran army might be enough. He picks up. He doesn't think so. Clem still has a big army to the south, but for the first time in the matches we've seen, it looks like Zhaon with an actual supply lead of note. Colossus from the north. A bunch of disruptors alongside it. A full broadside fired, and a full broadside lands as Clem miscalculated and it's gonna cost him much of his bio army the liberator still drawing a lot of fire and doing a lot of damage but i think that might be the tide turning there as the disruptors are able to launch a, a, a fuselage that laid i think we had it on laid that that really undercuts clem's opportunity he no longer has the map control he no longer has the army supply. This is the worst place to be against Ruptors. You don't want to be forced into a fight. In fact, he will not be forced into a fight. He will avoid that fight entirely. Seeing the writing on the wall and the Disruptors flying right towards it, Clem taps it out. Zhao adapts. I think a good demonstration of, of the difference there uh, between the both games. Zhao definitely getting better. Uh, Clem, not quite able to manage it. I think the addition of the DT has made a lot uh, of difference there, too. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed these games from Home Story Cup. Thank you, Take TV. Hopefully you enjoyed this series Jimmy picked out right for you. And hopefully
hopefully you continue to enjoy it. I hope I made your day uh, a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.